Today we're looking at intellectual property prior to significant business performance. I'm joined by Stephen Carter. Stephen is a qualified patent attorney specialising in intellectual property strategy and implementation. Welcome, Stephen. Hi, Let's nice start with, <laughs> what is intellectual property and what impact does it have on business performance? Um, so it's a great question. Um, and I guess the, the starting point for me is that if, if as a business you're innovating, then you are by default creating intellectual property. Um, so you can, you can think of IP as the, uh, if like the, the fruits of your labour, the, the outputs from that innovation work. So it's things like uh, the software code that's being written, the inventions that are being created, um, the product designs, the processes you're designing, um, the brands you're creating, the graphics. Um, and then tied in with that, you have intellectual property rights, and these are the legal rights that are used to protect the IP that you're generating. Um, and so that's things like uh, patents and registered designs and registered trademarks, which are uh, registered rights that you have to obtain through application processes. And there's also unregistered intellectual property rights, so things like trade secrets, copyright, database rights, um, which all come into existence automatically but still need Sort of, sort of looking after and, and recognizing they're there. Otherwise, you can you can find you you lose them without realizing it. Um, and when you think about the way businesses innovate, um, the the innovations don't fall neatly into kind of one of those little boxes. What you tend to find is that an, an innovation, so a new, a new product, for example, will encompass multiple different types of those intellectual property uh, assets. Um, and you protect them or can protect them with a kind of mosaic of intellectual property rights. Um, There's lots to think about in there then. And, and for MDs who are considering the next business initiative, how important is it that they think about intellectual property in advance? Um, you know, I, th I think it's really important, Alistair, and I think it's one of the things that particularly small businesses tend to, to overlook. Um, there was, so there was a recent EPO study um, done in conjunction with the, the EU IPO as well. So a couple of different sort of national or international bodies looking at this. Um, and, and they concluded in their study that um, although there's only a small percentage, it's something like sort of four, only four or 5% of SMEs actually engage properly with intellectual property rights and use them effectively. Um, but those that do, um, what their study showed is that they generate 68% more revenue per employee than those without portfolios of IP rights. Wow. Um, and, and it makes sense because if you think about it, your IP, it, it's for most businesses, it's the thing that makes their business unique. It's, it's the kind of, you know, it's their business DNA, if you like. And um, it's the thing that distinguishes them from the competition and potentially gives them that competitive advantage. So if you don't nurture and protect that IP, um, then you, you know, you're not going to do as well. Yeah. And I suppose that's a really interesting. And, and I guess to spell it out, what is the link between intellectual property and revenue? Um, well, I guess the, the answer the answer there depends a bit on what your business model is, um, and that's that's another really important point, which is that when you're looking at IP strategy, it's really important to look at it in the context of the particular business. So, so for some businesses, the, the link will be a very obvious one. So, if you've got a business where they're generating revenue by licensing their intellectual property, um, or they have a franchising type model where the intellectual property is kind of at the heart of of the business model, it's very clear that. You know, IP is, is the asset that they're sweating to generate that revenue. Um, but for a lot of other businesses, um, again, it's a case of looking at the revenue streams and saying, you know, how, how are they making money? How are they planning to make money? Mm. And what are the underlying assets that are supporting those revenue streams? And you know, in 99% in of the cases, the under, underlying asset will be IP. It will be the, the fancy product they've designed. It will be the you know, technologically advanced um, product that makes them better than the competition and that's the thing that's that is generating the revenue and it is de facto IP and, and it needs looking after. Okay interesting and I, and, and I guess we ought to just wrap up with uh, what happens if you get it wrong what's, what's the cost of not protecting your IP? Yeah and, and you know sad, sadly you know I, could, I, could, I know we don't have a great deal of time I could tell a few war stories about when <laughs> things do go wrong um, but maybe, maybe that's one for another time but but I guess you could sum it up as saying um, that uh, if, you know, if you don't look after your IP rights, you're not preserving that competitive advantage. Um, you find that you could be you know, losing revenue, you're losing ground to the competition um, when you needn't otherwise. 
Um, and particularly for businesses that are ambitious to grow and they're looking for funding, if you don't have your kind of IP house in order, you could find that that's an obstacle to getting the funding you want because savvy investors will want to see that you've got that exclusivity in, in the product and in the marketplace that you're attacking with your product. Um, otherwise, they're going to be more hmm. reluctant yeah. to invest or certainly not invest on as good a terms as they might do otherwise. Well, hopefully that's given um, what is a lot to think about. So uh, yeah, I'd like to say thank you to Stephen and uh, Steve Carter for talking to me today um, and, and to everybody watching this video. For more tips on, on just growth and revenue generation, visit my YouTube channel or, or have a look at my page, revenueworks.co.uk. And in the meantime, let's keep on growing. Mm -hmm.